So it's 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 still early. We're still waiting on a lot of results. I don't have anything prepared to say yet. We're we're it's still very early, and we're seeing things come in. But I just wanted to talk with you all. You know, when we got into this race, you know, um, this has been an underdog campaign from the very beginning. People people told us from the very beginning that uh, you know perhaps per, perhaps it wasn't time to stand up. Perhaps it was perhaps it wasn't time to stand and fight. But, you know, I, I look at our, our country, I look at our state, I look at us in a situation in this, in this country where we have been for a very long time beset on all sides by unscrupulous politicians, both Republicans and Democrats, an establishment in Washington, yeah. D.C. that disregards our Constitution, tramples our liberties and takes our money and, 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 and wastes it on projects that, frankly, are very difficult to justify. You know, I think that it is important to stand up. It is important to stand up and fight for what's right, no matter the odds, no matter what's before us. You know, our Constitution means something. You know, this country was founded on the idea that we are all, each of us as individuals, we are entitled to inalienable rights, to life, to liberty, the pursuit of happiness. You know, our founding generation, they fought a revolution against a king who was far away and distant and out of touch with the people, who didn't, who didn't respect our freedoms, didn't respect our liberties, didn't respect what, what God had given us as, as free people. And that's what this race has been about. It's been about standing up and fighting, standing up and fighting for those things that belong to us inherently as Maine people, as American people, as individuals, you know, as, as free individuals. So whatever... Thank you. Whatever happens tonight, and again, it's still early. We're still waiting on results coming in. But whatever happens tonight, I'm proud of the fact that we've all stood and fought together. I'm proud of the fact that from the beginning to the end, we, we've stood up for what we, we know to be true, what we know to be right, which is that we as Maine people deserve to be free. We deserve to be able to make our own choices in our own lives, and we deserve much better than this faraway city in Washington, D.C., 500 miles away from our border, telling us how to live and taking our money. You know, here we are. You know, I remember... And I'm just speaking off the cuff here. I, I remember when I was when I was younger. I see, you know, I see we've got a lot of people here of all ages. I know we got some high school students here who've been very involved in this campaign, and they deserve a round of applause. You know, I remember when I was when I was younger. Now, some would say, Eric, you're pretty young now, and that's well, I guess it's all in the eye of the beholder, I suppose. But I remember when I when I was in in high school, and uh, you know. We marched off in, into war back when I was in, in high school, uh, into the war in Iraq. We'd been in Afghanistan, and I look back on it now, and we're in Afghanistan now still, 17 years later. 17 years later. Osama bin Laden is dead. The people who attacked us are dead, and yet our, tr our, our, our troops are still over there. I know I, I have talked to so many veterans who come home from these wars who tell me, we're still over in Afghanistan. I don't know what we're doing over there. Seems like someone's making money off of it. But we're not doing we're not doing a service to our troops by sending them off to, to fight in these wars without a clear mission. We're not standing by what America is supposed to be about. You know, our, our men and women in uniform signed up to defend our country, to defend our constitution, to defend our freedoms and liberties. They didn't sign up to be the policemen of the world. And frankly, that's, that's, that's not what our military is for. You know, it seems like we spend more time, our, our, those in Washington, D.C. Are, are, are more occupied policing the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan than they are with their own borders here in America. You know, it, it seems that so many in Washington have completely lost touch with what their responsibility is supposed to be. You know, I, I, I talk a lot about our Constitution, and something that, you know, in the state Senate I swore an oath to uphold, I believe very strongly in. You know, but our entire Bill of Rights has been eroded in so many ways, from our First Amendment to our Tenth Amendment. 
We live in a time now where free speech is called hate speech. Conservative ideas are shouted down and picketed and rioted, and people are, 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 violence is threatened against people for speaking up. Our Second Amendment has been under attack, and thankfully we've stood up here in Maine against that. But we can see the forces, the forces gathering against our right to keep and bear arms. We can see our own, our own United States Senator, Angus King, who's been, who's been financed by Michael Bloomberg, the gun grabber-in-chief, who's been, who's been uh, voting in Washington to, to strip us of our rights. But even more than that, our Fourth Amendment, we don't talk about this nearly enough. Our Fourth Amendment, our, our fundamental right to privacy, we, it has been absolutely shredded. We live in a day and age now where Washington, D.C. tells us that they have the absolute right to, to monitor everything we do on our phones, our text messages, our, our metadata, our, our emails, our browsing history. You know, we're, we're told by this city 500 miles away that, that everything we do is subject to their scrutiny. That's not what this country's about. That's, that, that, that's completely ridiculous to what, our, to what our founding generation set up for us. But we're losing it. We're losing the freedoms that, that, that this country was built on. You know, our, our, our Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment, Seventh Amendment, Eighth Amendment, these are the amendments designed to protect us from our criminal justice system, our rights as people. And yet we live in a society now where we have more people uh, behind bars in America than any other developed country in the world, and not, oftentimes for nonviolent victimless crimes. Sometimes it's for things as, as silly as people, the choices people make with things like cannabis. I mean, it's crazy this day and age that we live in that this is still going on. And our Ninth Amendment, our Ninth Amendment says that those rights, well, let me, let me, let me open it just to make sure I, I don't butcher it. But our, our Ninth Amendment, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. That means something very simple. Our rights as free people in America are unlimited. We have the right to make our own choices. Absolutely. And we deserve, and we deserve representation in Washington, D.C. that's going to fight for our rights. And we deserve a, a, a U.S. Senator who's going to fight for our Tenth Amendment, which says that those powers not expressly delegated to Congress belong to the states and the people. And if it's not in Article 1, Section 8, they're not supposed to be doing it in Washington, D.C. We're supposed to be able to make our own choices here in Maine, whether that's, whether that's with cannabis or health care or education. But now we have this one-size-fits-all this one fits all government giving down one-size-fits-all solutions to all of us. And it's driving us apart as a country. You know, America is more culturally diverse than we have ever been. Maine is different than California. We're different than Oregon. We're different than Kansas. We're, we're, we're our own unique state. But more and more, we're expect, we're, we, we, are, we are told that we must live under these one-size-fits-all rules that aren't working. We need to be able to make our own choices here in Maine. That's what this campaign has been about. That's what it continues to be about. And whatever happens tonight, again, we're still, it's still early. But whatever happens tonight, this is campaign has been about the fight for Maine. And this campaign is just one battle in the fight for Maine. And that fight for Maine continues on. Wherever we go after tonight, every, any time that, that, that we see that Washington, D.C. is kicking us around, any time that we see that our freedoms, our, our constitutional rights are not being respected, that the money that we earn is being stolen from us by the richest region in America, Washington, D.C., that doesn't make anything at all. They just have gotten so rich off of stealing from the rest of us. That's why we need to fight for Maine. So I want to thank you all for coming out today. I want to thank each and every single person across the entire state of Maine who came out to vote today and put their faith in, 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 in this campaign for U.S. Senate. We have a long road, a long fight ahead of us. No matter the outcome tonight, the fight for Maine continues. And I ask and I charge every single person here to be a part of that fight. Whoever it is that's, that's, that's running, you know, whoever it is that's carrying the torch of liberty forward, it's me today, but it could be any of you tomorrow. You know, that torch of liberty has been handed down from generation to generation in our country, and it's, I don't think that today is the day that that light goes extinguished. I think that it's in all of our hands now, and it's on all of us to carry forward. So I just want to say thank you all. Thank you for being here, and let's, let's fight for Maine. Thank you all.